everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I'm a professional artist. And if you guys have been watching my channel for a while now, you'll notice that the setup today is a little bit different. And that's because um, this week or the next couple of weeks are gonna be a really, really hectic time for me. Mainly because I am starting to rev up the engine and get prepared for the holiday season. As somebody who's a full-time designer, illustrator, um, and who takes all of my designs and my illustrations and puts them onto products, the holiday season is a huge deal for me. And so I have a lot of things that are on the docket. So I have new illustrations, I have new products that I'm planning on launching, I have newsletters and preparing the website, all sorts of different things that I need to make sure that, um, you know, that gets done in time for the holidays. And also, not to compound all that, that extra work, uh, I have a baby on the way in November. So the pressure is really on to make sure that I've checked off all my boxes and hopefully by, you know, end of October, November, when the baby's here, I will be allowing my business to be on autopilot. So this week I'll be working on new illustrations for a new planner that I'm planning on launching sometime in October, hopefully, if I get it done on time. Um, and so last year I released a planner that was inspired by the great ballets. And if you're not familiar with my work, I actually specialize in illustrating dancers, ballerinas, and I really carved out a name for myself within that community and within that world. And so last year, the theme was the great ballets. And for that, I had 12 illustrations that were inspired by the great ballets. So I had uh, Swan Lake for the month of January. February, I had Jewels. And then March, you get the idea, but March, I had the Firebird. And so they all followed the format where I had a big illustration on one side of the planner, a monthly view on the other side, and then the weekly, or daily, weekly, daily view where you can put all your appointments and all the things that you want on your calendar. And so um, I'm gonna be reissuing this for this year, but I'm also working on a brand new design, which I'm really excited about because this is something that has been in my sketchbook for the past two or three, two years. And it's the idea of dancing around the world. And so for that idea, I just thought it would be really great to merge the world of dance and the world of travel. And so my plan is for each of the 12 months to have a person dancing within a different country or geographical location. So I have France, I have Italy, Japan, Brazil, the list goes on and on. So that is what I am planning on doing. It's a pretty big undertaking because it's, uh, it's 12 months, so 12 illustrations plus the cover plus this little, um, you know, this planner belongs to page, plus uh, another area up here in the yearly date, uh, the yearly calendar uh, format here where I'm just gonna put little illustrations. So, you know, that's gonna come up to 15 in total, 15 illustrations within the next two months. So I have actually, you know, completed a bunch of them. I've done France and I've done Japan and I've done Brazil. And on my desk, I have just finished wrapping up London or the UK, as well as Venice. So these ones are still, you know, in on, pa on paper. The other ones are already in the computer and already composed and ready to go. If you're wondering why all of the pieces of each of these locations are, are different and why it's not one you know, unified composition. It's actually because, you know, this is a trick that I learned when I was still working in design agencies, is that makes your life a lot easier and you can work a lot quicker when you can take apart your illustration into many different pieces and then compose them on the computer afterwards. It makes things easier in terms of if you need to change proportions or if you need to change a layout at the last minute. Obviously, it's not something that you would do if you wanted to mount this or put this in a frame and, and put it up on your wall. But in terms of being really efficient and being able to get something done on time and, and deadlines, that kind of thing, this kind of method of, of breaking it up into smaller pieces really works very, very well um, if you're on a tight timeline and time crunch.
The way I'm able to compose it in a way that works as a unified composition is that I actually do thumbnails first. And so I make sure that I've planned as much as possible ahead of time with thumbnails and have an overarching view of what I want my layout to be. And once that's locked in and I think that I've got a good handle of it, then I illustrate everything as separate pieces and components so that um, I'll have a little bit more flexibility if I decide I want to change anything along the way. For this project, I'm using gouache paints. And the reason why I'm doing gouache as opposed to, let's say, a wa you know, watercolor medium, which is what I'm typically known for, is for production parameters. And that's another thing where my previous life as a you know, agency style graphic designer comes into play. And that's really where form follows function. And so I always, when I'm developing products, like to think of how it's gonna be printed, what are the production limitations? What's the size? All that kind of stuff. So that once I know what the limitations are, then I can try to maximize how my artwork can apply to those limitations. And so for this planner, I know that it's not printed on super fancy coffee table style glossy paper. So if I end up printing like lots of color and washes and gradients, and it's a really complicated and colorful artwork, um, odds are that I'll fall into printing problems and the things getting blotchy or, you know, not reproducing at the level that I want it to. So with gouache, I know that if I paint things in a very flat poster-like kind of way, I have a much better chance of things looking like what I envisioned when I'm painting it than getting messed up in the production process. So um, long story short, that's why I chose gouache for this and I also think gouache just works really well for this you know this kind of style I think it's it's fun it's whimsical and um, I think I just think it's really good at work
So I gave you a little glimpse of what's going on behind the scenes this week at Studio Point Brush. And let me know in the comments below if you're interested in, you know, these types of videos where it's not really a tutorial or a tip or a hack, but more of a, you know, a view of what it's like in an actual commercial artist's studio. And so this is something that I do for a living and it's what pays the electrical bills. It's what pays, you know, for the food on the table. And so, um, you know, I have gotten comments from people, you know, asking, you know, what is it really like working day to day in a graphic design um, and illustration studio? And so that is really my day to day life. And um, if you're interested in seeing more of this, then I can try to record more videos in this style where it's a little bit more informal and we're talking about how I do things, how I bring them onto the computer, that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching and for joining me on this, you know, this weekly vlog. And I will see you next time.